Now, people ask, are there scientific errors in the Bible? Also, when the Bible rounds off numbers, isn't that a mistake? Well, Dr. Geisler answers these questions. Listen. Another mistake of the critics, forgetting the Bible uses non-technical, everyday language. The Bible is not unscientific, but it is a pre-scientific book. It was written in everyday language that anyone could understand, like the sun sets, or Joshua and Joshua 10 saying, the sun stood still in the sky. Now, it's no more unscientific to say the sun stood still than it is to say the sun sets. And what does every scientist every day in the United States say? He's called a meteorologist. He says, sunrise this morning, sunset tonight. No scientist I've ever heard of looks out the, uh, the western sky ablaze with red and says to his wife, honey, look at the beautiful earth rotation. We don't talk that way. The Bible talks in everyday language too. Also, another mistake you'll often hear people make about the Bible is assuming that round numbers are false. Well, round numbers aren't false. Uh, pi is representing the Bible as about three, and pi is about three. Now, more precisely, it's 3.14159 and so forth. But when it says that the little C out in front of Solomon's temple was 10 cubits across and 30 cubits around, that doesn't mean the Bible is wrong. It means that it was speaking in round numbers. Scientists today use round numbers. In fact, pi doesn't come out even. I saw a guy who recited pi to 10,000 decimal points. It took him three hours to do it. Uh, at the end of 10,000 decimal points, he was still an infinite uh, number away from the most precise number you could get to. But for all practical purposes, 3.1 rounds off to 3. For all practical purposes, 3.3 rounds off to 3. The Bible speaks in round numbers, speaks in everyday language. Another mistake, neglecting to notice that the Bible uses different literary devices. For example, the Bible being a human book speaks in poetry, the book of Job, Psalms, written in poetry. It also uses allegories, like in Galatians chapter 4. uses parables in the uh, first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, filled with parables. even uses hyperbole. Paul said in Colossians 1.23, I preached the gospel to every creature under heaven, meaning he evangelized the then known world. So the Bible speaks in human literary uh, devices because it's a human book. Another mistake you'll find critics using is forgetting uh, that only the original text, not every copy of Scripture, is without error. We don't believe that God inspired every copy. We believe that He inspired the original, and the copies are good, they're adequate, they're sufficient, but there are minor errors that crept in. Let me give you an example of one. Uh, take a look here at the screen. Look at this graphic. 2 Kings 8.26 gives the age of King Ahaziah as 22. But in 2 Chronicles 22.2, it says he was 42. The latter number can't be correct or he would have been older than his father. This is obviously a copyist error, but it does not alter the inerrancy of the original. Uh, there are many of these copyist errors in the Bible. It says 4,000 stalls Solomon's horses in one passage. Another says 40,000. That's the kind of error you like on the end of your paycheck, an extra zero. The Bible is inerrant in the original manuscripts, but not every copy is inerrant. Some of the minor errors in the copy. But I'd like you to notice something very important here. Take a look at this graphic. The first line uh, has an error in it. The second line has an error, and the third and the fourth lines all have an error, but the error is in a different place. Now, if you had received a telegram with that first line, would you pick up your $10 million? Of course you would. Well, how do you know? Because, well, from the context, it looks like the first letter should be a Y, and Y means you, and you means me, and that means $10 million. Well, good reasoning. But if you got a telegram and it had those four lines on and the error was in a different place, you'd be absolutely sure what it said. In fact, the more errors in the copies, the more you're sure of what the original said. We have over 5,000 uh, copies of the New Testament, and there are little errors in different places. But the more errors, the more we're sure of what the original said. So minor errors in the copies do not affect us getting 100% of the truth from the original, and it certainly doesn't prove there was an error in the original. No one has ever found an original manuscript with an error in it.